Hi everybody. Today we will discuss about the basics of SAP Basis Administration. SAP Basis Administrator has to make sure that all SAP systems in a system landscape runs very smooth without any interference. So he, he has to make sure that all users can access what they have to access uh, and they access very fast. Uh, he's he or she is responsible for installing and configuring SAP systems, backup and restore, performance tuning, manage batch jobs, uh, configure TMS, manage transpo transports and also manage uh, background jobs, uh, install printers and other devices. Also set up operation modes. First we will talk about the 3T architecture of SAP. If I have to log in into an SAP system, I log in from the presentation layer using a web browser or SAP GUI. Web browser, if I use, I have to give information about the public IP address of the server or the domain name of the server and then the port number, appropriate port number. If I am using SAP GUI to log in, then I have to install a program in my personal computer and I have to give some credentials of the server such as uh, uh, system ID, application server name that is the host name of the server or the IP address, instance number uh, and see then the SAP router string. SAP router string is uh, either SAP router string or I can give the public IP address of the location where the router is uh, installed. So when I, when I give my information, like when I click on SAP GUI login, then I will, I will connect to the application server of the SAP system. The application server of the SAP system is run by two environments. One is Java and other one is ABAP and Java connector JCO connects them. And there are different instances running in a SAP basis layer. Each instance is made up of one dispatcher, several work processors and associated memory. We must have central services and at least one central instance should run to run the SAP basis layer. So when I try to connect to an SAP system, the SAP system first has to check my authentication. It should authenticate me first. To authenticate me, it has to ask uh, my information like my credentials, my username and the password. And apart from that, it will ask, you, ask me another question. That is the client number. Client number, client actually is an entity in SAP, a business entity. If suppose I have two clients, say 800 and 900, and if I have a user created in client 800, that user cannot log in into client 900 unless he or she is created in 900. Same as same with material code and other things. Those are client specific net data. So I can create company, company codes, chart of accounts and so on for one particular client. So after I log in into the SAP basis layer, I can I can have access to the applications which are running above the basis layer such as finance, sales and distribution, project system, production planning, human resources etc. Et but if I want to access them, I have to either use the SAP screen login, I mean SAP menu, menu or I can use T codes. So when I use a T code, SAP, SAP application server has to check whether I am authorized to do that transaction. So when I log in, authentication is checked. When I execute a transaction, authorization is checked. Whenever I ask for some information, my information can come from the database buffer. Some information is in the shared memory as well, such as user information. If I had logged in before my user context and the things I was working on before will be in the May, uh, in the memory, shared memory. So that information can come from there. But if I ask for any request about a material, 
that can come from the database buffer if it is there otherwise it has to come from the database layer that is a database server which can be same as the application which can which can be in the application server itself or it can be a separate server i can use oracle ms sql or any other popular database in this layer database layer runs on operating system the operating system can be os 400 unix windows etc or linux the hardware can be either as 400 uh, pcs spark systems ibm systems etc during the evolution of the application layer uh, it was changed from sap basis to sap web application server so now they call this as web a uh, web application server they introduced a new technology called uh, net netweaver technology uh, in ecc like in, in the year 2004 so ecc 5 ecc 6 at that time they introduced this technology all the sap servers should run on web application server it can be either ecc which, which we saw in a ecc system just few minutes ago or it can be a crm system or srm system or sem system or supply chain management system scm or can be apo system any system any sap system should run on web application server the other systems are bi enterprise portal and so on from the presentation layer users log in and they reach the application layer application layer application in the application layer i may have multiple sap servers running they are connected to the layer database server so information goes and comes from database layer and taken to the uh, presentation layer where users are logged in So whenever a user a user requests an information that information is waiting in the dispatcher if dispatcher is available uh, dispatcher will hold the information and uh, until the until a dialog work process is available so when the dialog work process is available the information will go from the dispatcher to the dialog work process and through the database process it will access the database and the information comes back to the work process memory dialog work process memory and the processing is done and then information goes back to the dispatcher and then the user so work process has different areas to do this for example it has task handler it has its, its own memory it has a bab interpreter so if suppose i have to process some information here A, a program which is going to process has to be loaded from the database so we have a bab interpreter to interpret that program after it is loaded database interface allows me to communicate with different types of database task handler coordinates all these activities normally my user use information if he has logged in before or she has logged in before few uh, recently in shared memory so that uh, that shared memory has the users uh, authentication authorization information and also it has uh, objects uh, which which was used by the user some time ago so that can roll in into the memory and then after after it is done or the work process uh, stop uh, stop uh, using stop actually uh, the processing it goes back to the memory area shared memory area that is called rolled out roll out netweaver technology was introduced a few years ago somewhere around 2004 it it consists of multiple products like mobile infrastructure bi master data management enterprise portal exchange infrastructure and, and so on and all these servers are running on uh, web application server so the purpose of uh, selling this as one technology is the total cost of ownership is less and all these things are partly integrated all these different modules are partly integrated and uh, easy to start uh, implementation 
So we use SAP GUI to connect to SAP server and we have to give some information such as the application server name, instance number, system ID and the SAP router string. So after that when we click on the login button, we will go to the SAP login screen where it will ask for the username and password. So client is a business entity as I mentioned before. So we have to make sure that I, I am logging to the right client. By default it's showing 800 here. So I give my username and password and the language if I don't give, I will. I, it will take the default language. As a basis administrator, I use something called T-codes to do my activities. Uh, so normally I, I do things like what I what is shown in the screen. I check the background jo background jobs. I display the application server to find out whether they are really running, uh, and I manage the user sessions, manage work process, and so on. And also I have to I have to analyze the system log dump. I have to see whether any dumps uh, are there. All the ba background processes are done. All the batch processes are done, uh, and so on. So now I am going to show you. Uh, I'm going to show you how I am going to log in into an SAP system. So I will I, I actually opened a SAP logon screen. So I have a server here, many servers. I select one of them. So the description I gave something what I wanted to give here. So I can give any name which is descriptive. Then I give the application ser server name or IP address. This is the server's name, the host name or the Unix host name or Windows server name and instance number and uh, system ID. This server is in the same network or subnet so I don't have to give the router string. So when I log in into the server by double clicking this I will get a screen like this. So I will give my name So when I log in, I will get a SAP Easy Access menu. At the bottom, I will give the st uh, status status item, my menu here, status bar there. And then I have a, uh, a small menu here which shows what transaction is running. The current transaction is Session Manager. Uh, I can select any one of them and I logged into Client 001. And I have a system here. Uh, sorry, I have a program running. This is the program for this particular T code. Okay, then I logged in here, then I get a nice screen here, then I can go down and I can click on these uh, items in the, in the menu to do my work. Or I can go back, I can go back and I can type a command. So I can either type a command at the top in this location or I can use the menu item menu to, to execute my transaction. So for example, if I type here SM51, it will show me the application servers which are running. So in the morning when I go there, I want to make sure that all the application servers are running. So if I have 10 systems here, it will show all the 10 systems. And it, if it is not green and if it is not active, then I have to find out why before the users come and complain. Then also I type SM, uh, for example, SM50, SM50 will show me all the work processes running. It shows that I have a dialog work processes running, four of them. And then I have update work process, NQ work process, background, spool and update, second update. That is, this is for the, for the mission critical updates. This is the other one, regular one. And also it shows who are the people logged in here. And, uh, what report they are running, what action they are taking on a table and uh, and so on. If you want to check, if I type AL08, I can see who are the people who are logged in at this time. And from where they are logged in. So this is what I wanted to explain to you today.